The judicial system, court of law, plays an important role in our current CFI system, contract enforcement. Does the judicial system have a role in DeFi? And what progress has been made for integrating blockchain with the judicial system? Uh, that's a, a great question, and um, there is some complexity to it here. Ultimately, the role of blockchain smart contracts is to uh, implement adjudication um, in a digital realm. So essentially, the terms of the contract are enforced by um, the smart contract language as executed on a blockchain. Um, this is seemingly not open to interpretation, but then you run into problems, which, it, which are things like, what happens if there's a bug in the smart contract? Who's liable for that damage? What happens if the bug in the smart contract causes damage uh, to real property um, or life outside of the blockchain system? Um, and um, for example, and I'm just going to pull something crazy out of my mind. Uh, let's say you have a system where you can uh, rent vehicles um, using a blockchain. And let's say that someone is trying to transport a severely injured person to the hospital in a rented vehicle. And then the car stops before it gets to the hospital and says, please insert more ETH to continue driving. And uh, at that moment, gas fees are too high. So the payment can't go through and the person dies in the back seat of the car. Okay, outrageous for now, uh, but a possible future. So we see that some of the effects of smart contracts will bleed over, mm, that was a bad pun, unintended, into real life. Uh, and so what do you do in that case? The legal system uh, exists among other reasons not only to solve disputes, but also to assign liability. When liability arises that cannot be managed within the constraints of a contract, like for example a pandemic, an act of God, a hurricane, or um, some other event where it's not clear who is at fault, the legal system helps uh, among other reasons, among other things, to assign um, that risk, that cost, that damage to someone, someone who is both able to pay and um, at fault in some way in this system. So how do you connect the two? Well, there's a downside, of course, because the judicial system has two major weaknesses. The first major weakness is, of course, that it is subject to human whim and uh, lack of objectivity. And that means that in every place around the world, justice is flawed, and often very, very severely flawed, and doesn't actually deliver justice. The second problem, which is an even bigger problem, is that all justice systems, more or less, except for a few exceptions like maritime law and things like that, are jurisdictionally bound and determined by the laws of a single country. So when you have smart contracts which operate on a completely borderless, transnational, global system, um, whose jurisdiction are you operating in? Is it the location of the person who wrote the smart contract, the person who ran the smart contract, the person who has keys to the smart contract, the user or users of the smart contract, which ones? It gets very, very complex very, very fast. And in fact, that would be the first question to be resolved by the judicial system, which is who has standing and where does the jurisdiction lie, which could effectively mean you never get any justice because you end up fighting that argument for years. Anyway, bottom line, um, there have been some efforts um, to integrate legal systems with smart contracts. Um, and some of those involve using things like international arbitration as a common framework that applies to uh, more than 160 countries around the world by treaty and overrides local law, which might be an interesting way to go. Um, but the bottom line is that one of the ways that DeFi succeeds, and it remains borderless, neutral, and censorship resistant, is by attempting to um, reduce the amount of stuff that um, 
essentially becomes an exception to the blockchain's ability to resolve uh, through the smart contract. So what you're trying to do is keep as much of it as possible contained within the blockchain so that you don't run into legal arguments outside. By doing so, by reducing the burden on judicial access and representation and jurisdiction and things like that, DeFi can not only remain uh, global and um, uh, transnational, but also it can remain open to more participants and give participants opportunity where they have been effectively excluded from traditional financial systems because of the judicial system. Uh, so again, um, the, the national systems, both finance and judicial, exclude a lot of people. And one of the promises of DeFi is to change that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free, so if you want to support it, join me on Patreon.